you know, if you're seeking out functional medicine, you want to make sure you, you in your mind are, you have your own agenda, but listen to the practitioner's agenda too, because if you've gone through this a thousand times, we can tell you straight up, Hey, look, if you've got way too much inflammation, I know you want to get rid of the bugs. So do we, but you may feel like crap if we do it too soon. 100%. So we want to build everything up so we have that foundation ready to go. Number two, a lot of people, there's two ways to take a binder. So number one is you know you're eating a questionable food or drink and you want it to be in your system to bind any potential crud with that up. That's where you would take that with food, with that food. Number two, you're in the middle of a detoxification program and it's a longer term thing. We probably don't want you taking that binder every single day with regular healthy food. So we would have you do it typically an hour before a meal and or two to three hours after a meal to avoid binding up those minerals and nutrients. So we would try to time it up on an empty stomach. Now, sometimes it's easier to do it midday between breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner, or some people will do it when they get up and then when they go to bed and just leave an hour before, you know, half hour, 45 minutes before breakfast in the morning, and then at least two hours after dinner at night. Those are really good prime times. And of course, a holiday weekend, you can always take activated charcoal with uh, any of your questionable foods and drink. That's super helpful. Yeah, and dosing wise, most of the time when you find activated charcoal, it's gonna be in about a 250 milligram to 500 milligram dose. And so I think there's a, a range that people can do. Now, I will say, I just kind of come to this realization over the weekend. So I'm sharing this with Justin for the first time you know, I've been battling dizziness and sort of this disequilibrium for probably like six months or so, if not more, actually, no, it was since last July. So we're talking almost a year. And what I just kind of made the connection, detoxification and binding, you have to mobilize a lot of your toxins, but you have to detox them at the same time. So it's kind of this seesaw where if I do too much glutathione, which is another detoxification strategy we'll mention, but if I don't do enough binders with it, I feel worse. But if I don't do enough glutathione or enough binder, then I still feel bad. I still feel dizzy. So when I feel like my best and I'm not recirculating toxins, it's the perfect dose of glutathione, which for me is about 200 milligrams of acetyl glutathione with NAC one gram and then 500 milligrams of charcoal. So glutathione would come first in the morning, let's say 7 a.m. I would try to wait an hour, do binders or in reverse order, you could do binders first thing, like 7 a.m. binders, glutathione at eight, and then breakfast right after. Uh, so so that's kind of the hard part too is, you know, somebody pointed out in the comments that it's confusing between the meals time because we're often told to take our herbs. They thought they would bind the herbs too. Yeah, that's the hard part is, I think the hardest part about binders, it's so simple and effective, but the hardest part is the timing, remembering to take them and remembering to take them away from your medication, your other supplements and herbs. 100%. And really important, we want to make sure we're supporting the lymph, right? So drinking enough water helps support the lymph, right? The solution to pollution is dilution, right? Say that four times fast. We want to make sure we're providing hydration so the lymph can move. Ginger tea is awesome. I use this with a lot of my patients because ginger is anti-inflammatory. It's um, essentially an anticoagulant. It keeps things moving. It's also a biofilm buster. So if we have biofilm, which are these protective shields, used by critters, it will definitely help with that and, and take those shields out of their hand and allow the antimicrobials to be more effective. So that's for sure. Now, a couple other gentle um, lymphatic supports that we'll do is we'll do red root, which is going to be a powerful anticoagulant. Uh, we'll do things like slippery elm. We'll do dandelion. We'll do milk thistle, skullcap, rhubarb. Rose hips is shown to be incredibly effective at mobilizing toxins and just kind of gently nudging it out of the body. So these are all very, very powerful strategies that we can utilize to keep things moving.